Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Portuguese political parties. Today's episode was requested by Victor Savana Granja. If you want me to do an episode on another country's political parties, please let me know either in the comments, via email, or in the request form in the description. I currently have requests to do French parties, French territorial politics, Romanian parties, Spanish parties, Indian parties, which may or may not be broken up into three episodes, Malaysian parties, Italian parties, the Chinese United Front, Danish parties, a history of UKIP and YouTubers, and many more. So in terms of background, the main thing to keep in mind is Portuguese politics have always been just a little unstable. Starting from the 19th century, you had the Napoleonic invasions of the country, then civil wars from 1828 to 1834, a coup that overthrew the monarchy in the 1910s, leading to a very turbulent republic, another coup in 1926, leading to the corporatist and fascist Estado Novo regime, and in 1974, a left-wing coup that brought about the current Portuguese Third Republic. Things under this current constitution have been fairly stable, although in recent years, economic downturn, conflicts between the left and right, and the wider European migrant crisis has led to more instability. Also, the current Portuguese state is officially, on paper, a socialist state. But this is in many ways in name only. Capitalism and liberal democracy are very much present in Portugal, and many parties, especially on the political right and center, will only pay some lip service to socialist ideals. The main legislative body in the country is the Assembly of the Republic, which is made up of 230 MPs. These MPs are elected via proportional representation from 22 electoral districts from both Portugal itself, its archipelago territories in the Atlantic, and the diaspora. The number of MPs in each district will vary from 2 to 48 MPs, so the number of votes a party needs to get elected will vary quite considerably. These 230 MPs will elect the prime minister, the most powerful political figure in the country, and their cabinet, along with appointing some other members of important political bodies in the country, write rules and regulations, and can influence, review, and help craft government policy and the country's budget. Now while Portugal is a unitary state, there is a limited amount of autonomy given to its Atlantic archipelagos, the Azores and Madeira. They have their own regional governments, and while not incredibly important in understanding Portuguese politics, I will mention parties' influence within the legislative assemblies of these regions. Finally, Portugal is a member of the EU, and sends 21 members to represent themselves in EU Parliament. So the first party is Partito Socialista, or the Socialist Party, or PS. PS is the current ruling party of Portugal, and is the main center-left party in the country, representing social democratic and progressive movements. It is very dominant in Portuguese politics, and in most regions is either the first or the second most voted for party. Its support base tends to be older, less likely to be educated, more likely to be a woman, and are often found in the South, the East, and the Azores. It has 108 MPs in the Assembly of the Republic, is the main opposition in both the Azores and Madeira, and sends eight members to EU Parliament, where they sit with the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. It is currently headed by Antonio Costa, a former mayor of Lisbon and the current Prime Minister of the country. Also, the current Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, is a member of PS and served as Prime Minister of the country from 1995 to 2002. PS sits in line with other social democratic parties found throughout Europe. It supports a strong welfare state, backs progressive social values, and backs strong government involvement in the economy. It is pro-EU, supporting further European integration. Costa, in coming to power, has promised to fight back against austerity measures, increase income for the average Portuguese person, and reduce taxes for the poor and middle class. Also, the party has on its website opinion pieces written by party members, talking about how Portugal needs to get more young people to start reading books, which is a super boomer thing to argue for, arguing for more regulation on the internet, to limit targeted ads and the size of major internet companies, and arguing that the government should spend more to make Portugal carbon neutral by 2050. Criticism towards PS is similar to criticism of social democratic parties found throughout Europe. The right sees them as wasteful spenders and as too socialist, while leftists argue that they uphold neoliberal institutions and see them as too capitalist. PS can also find itself squabbling within, as those that want a more socialist, socialist party, argue for a move to the left, while the more centrist and social democratic faction, like Prime Minister Costa, 
argues for a more moderate and pragmatic approach. PS also has been accused of corruption and of giving greater funds to local governments that are friendly towards them and their policies. The next party, like PS, is one of the main parties in the country, Partito Social Democrata, or the Social Democratic Party, or PSD, is the second largest party in the country. It was originally formed as a kind of broad tent with a coalition of social democrats, centrists, and some Christian democrats opposed to the more left-wing and socialist forces taking over the country after the opening up of democracy in 1975. It has shifted now into becoming a center-right liberal conservative party, similar to many other mainline conservative parties found throughout Europe. Its support base tends to be found in the north, the diaspora, and in the Atlantic archipelagos. Its supporters also tend to be college-educated, are more likely to be male, and will come from either the younger or older generation, with less middle-aged supporters. It currently has 79 MPs, is the head of the ruling coalition in both the Azores and Madeira, and sends six members to EU Parliament, who sit with the European People's Party group. The party is currently headed by Rui Rio, an MP and the current head of the opposition, also the current president of Portugal, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, while not a member of the party, was formerly a member and was elected with PSD support. PSD backs economic liberalism and privatization, opposing increases to the welfare state. For the 2019 election, it argued for lowering taxes, opposes same-sex marriage, and opposes legalizing euthanasia. It also is pro-EU and pro-NATO, wanting more money to be spent on the military budget. PSD is often stereotyped as a party for rich elites, and not really representing the average Portuguese person. The party's economic liberalism really hurt the party during the 2010s, when the party carried out widely unpopular austerity measures, where they dramatically cut spending and reduced welfare benefits and programs, which resulted in the party's defeat in the 2015 and 2019 elections. The party also has been criticized for being too moderate by those on the right, and really only standing up for economic liberalism, and I'd imagine it suffers from some factionalism considering its move from a big tent party to a more firm center-right party. Next we have the Bloco de Esquerda, or the Left Bloc, or BE. BE is made up of a collection of left-wing forces in Portugal, such as Democratic Socialist, left-wing Populist, Progressives, Dissident Social Democrats, and other Marxist-aligned groups. It, while not an official partner to the government, does often cooperate with PS, and prevents attempts by right-wing parties to bring about the fall of the current PS government. Its support base tends to be young, college-educated, more likely to be a woman, and seems to be most popular in the center of the country and along the coast. It currently has 19 MPs, is present in the Azores legislature, and sends two members to EU Parliament, who sit in the left of EU Parliament group. It is currently led by Catarina Martins, an MP. The left bloc, while I wouldn't say are fierce anti-capitalist, do call for, quote, the search for alternatives to capitalism. It is socially liberal, arguing for equal rights in Portugal and for greater inclusion for women, ethnic minorities, the LGBTQ community, and the poor in Portugal, and considers itself to be an internationalist party. It strongly opposes austerity measures, wants a strong welfare state, and are critical of the neoliberal organs and functions of the EU. It also wants to legalize euthanasia, wants to make it easier to move around in the country, opposes bullfighting, wants to do more to protect the environment, and argues for greater workers' rights. There is a joke that B wakes up in the morning and votes for PS back laws, and then at night goes out and protests these very same laws. This shows that there is a sense among some that the left bloc either can be interpreted as just a puppet of the more large and powerful PS, and or that the party, when in power, is unable to effectively carry out change. I imagine this is partially why the party has suffered from infighting over the years, between different factions within the party, although after Martins took control, she was able to limit the amount of infighting taking place. The party is also just generally criticized by the right for being too extreme, and since its demographic seems to be largely young college kids, I imagine there's a lot of stereotypes about pretentious virtue signaling yuppies that might also plague the party. After that, we have another left-wing party, Partito Comunista Português, or the Portuguese Communist Party, or PCP. The communists are... communist, and anti-capitalist being one of the oldest parties in Portugal, haven't been active, although at times repressed, since the 20s. If the left bloc is the left-wing party for the intelligentsia, then the communists are the left-wing party for the more working-class Portuguese. Its supporters tend to be older, are less likely to have gone to college, and are more likely to be men. The party is popular in rural areas in the south and in some industrialized areas of Lisbon, 
the party currently has 10 MPs, is present in the Medina legislature, and sends two members to EU Parliament, who sit in the left of EU Parliament Group. The party's general secretary is Geronimo de Sousa, an MP. The communists have a lot of the same ideological leanings as the left bloc. It is anti-capitalist, is internationalist, opposes neoliberalism in the EU, opposes austerity, wants a strong welfare state, fights for workers' rights, and opposes xenophobia in Portugal. However, the communists are often described as being more socially conservative when compared to BE, and more radical in their economic proposals. They argue for nationalization of key industries, and giving power to workers, wants to fight back against monopolies, opposes the legalization of euthanasia, favors greater decentralization in Portugal, and opposes further EU integration. The communists, unsurprisingly, are disliked by avid capitalists in the country, who will point out the woes many countries have suffered when run by communist regimes. They accuse the party of defending other left-wing regimes, like the USSR. After the fall of the USSR in the 90s, the communists lost a decent chunk of their support base, as infighting about the direction the party should go gripped it, and some felt the party became a relic of a bygone era. The party still is a major party within Portuguese society and politics, but with an aging support base, it remains unclear if the party will continue to hold on to its influence in Portuguese politics. The Portuguese communists are also members of the Unitary Democratic Coalition, a leftist coalition dominated and largely controlled by the communists. However, there is also the Partido Ecologista, Os Verdes, or the Ecologist Party, the Greens, or PEV. PEV is an eco-socialist party, largely agreeing with the communists on everything, but with a greater emphasis towards environmental issues, arguing that liberal and capitalist models of the economy have and will continue to result in environmental destruction. PEV and the communists have run every election together since 1987, and I'd argue they really are just a puppet party for the communists. It currently has two MPs in the Assembly of the Republic. It is currently led by Halusia Apollonia, a former MP. We go to the right with the Central Democratico e Social Partito Popular, or Democratic and Social Center People's Party, or as I'll just refer to it, as CDS. CDS is a conservative and Christian democratic party, sitting right of the PSD. It often serves as an ally to the PSD, and the two have ran jointly together at several points. Its support base tends to be found in rural areas in the north, are found in Medida, tend to be more educated, and many of its supporters are either young or in their 40s 50s. They currently have five MPs, are a part of the government in the Azores and Medida, and send one member to European Parliament, who sits in the European People's Party group. They are currently led by Francisco Rodriguez dos Santos, who formerly headed the party's youth wing. CDS supporters are often defined by holding socially conservative values. It is firmly against abortion in Portugal, and also opposes euthanasia, the legalization of weed, and same-sex marriage. On the European Union, the party over the years has had a wide range of opinions. At first they were pro-EU, and even had European Federalists in their ranks. But in 1992 they switched to a more Eurosceptic approach, and today they remain in favor of the European Union, but oppose further integration. They also support reduced taxes, free market economics, and want closer ties to Brazil, and Portugal's former colonies in Africa. CDS's social conservative has made them widely unpopular for socially progressive Portuguese, who see them as upholding regressive social systems. They also apparently, when founded, had a lot of backing from those who backed the far-right Estado Novo government. So, again, another reason progressive and left-wing activists might dislike the party. CDS itself has always tried to portray itself as a party of the center, and a personal humanism. But I'm not sure how many people actually buy that. CDS was in a coalition with PSD when the government carried out austerity measures, and the party has seen significant backlash from that. In the last election, the party received its worst results ever, only picking up a little over 4.2% of the vote, and other new right-wing parties now threatening the party's existence. Next we have Pesos Animais Natreza, or People Animals Nature, or PAN. PAN is an animal rights party, largely focusing on environmental issues. While it doesn't consider itself left-wing, preferring to be syncretic, I'd argue it leans to the left, considering a lot of its political positions. Its supporters tend to be young, college-educated, and found in urban areas and the diaspora. It currently has three MPs and is present in the Azores legislature. It is currently headed by Inain Sosa Real, an MP. Pan argues for greater legislation to protect animals, and wants to end bullfighting, opposes testing on animals, wants more restrictions on hunting, wants to reduce meat consumption in the country, and wants to slowly eliminate mass egg production. 
It believes that Portugal should work on becoming more sustainable, wants to remove chocolate milk from schools, wants to make it so supermarkets legally have to donate food surplus, opposes deforestation, and wants to invest more in renewable energy. It also backs progressive social policy, like LGBTQ education in school, wants to extend parental leave, supports pacifism, wants to fight corruption, and supports universal basic income. It is quite surprising how Pan managed to achieve some success when most animal rights parties throughout the world are often very small and weak and unable to achieve any electoral success. But Pan still has to deal with the perception of them just being a fringe party for animal rights. Something that for many people, especially those that are busy with paying bills and raising a family, can often come off as frivolous and a waste of time compared to larger issues like poverty, the economy, or domestic policy. The party also has suffered from some defections, with the party formally electing four MPs and one MEP. However, the MEP and one MP both left the party, citing their frustration with party leadership, who they allege were silencing dissent within the party and abandoning some of their principles. Also, the fact that they want to ban chocolate milk from schools probably means they have lost a very important part of the electorate. Kids still in primary school. Next we go to Chega, or Enough. Chega is a hard right party, representing nationalist and right-wing populist. Chega was recently formed in 2019, before the latest election, as a more right-wing breakoff of the PSD and CDS, seeing those parties as unwilling or unable to fight for what they see as traditional Portuguese values in the country. The party's victory into the Assembly of the Republic in the 2019 election was seen as a historic moment, considering Chega is one of the few parties that outright rejects socialism and leftist ideals in Portugal. While right now it is quite small, only receiving 1.3% of the vote in the last election, it is polling quite high, and in the presidential race earlier this year, the party won over 11% of the vote, meaning next election it likely will expand. Its support base tends to be highly educated, young, and comes from the south and the interior of the country. It currently has one MP and acts in a supply and confidence role for the regional government in the Azores. Its single MP is Andre Ventura, the party's leader, and formerly a member of the city council in Luors. Chega opposes political correctness and Marxism in Portugal. It defends the role that the Catholic Church played in the country's development, and sees Western civilization as inherently good. It is pro-life, favors the traditional nuclear family, wants to reduce immigration into Portugal, opposes Islamism, and argues there is no systematic racism in Portugal. Economically, it supports a free market, believes family businesses are the best kind of business organization, wants to raise sales taxes while decreasing income and property taxes, and favors a reduced bureaucracy. It also is pro-Israeli, strongly opposes further EU integration, backs tough on crime laws, wants to fight corruption, and had argued for an end to public spending in the education and healthcare sector. Chega's hard-right stance and opposition towards immigration has led to accusations that the party is racist and or xenophobic. In particular, the party and Ventura have been accused of making anti-Roma and anti-Black statements, with Ventura several times stating that most Roma live off welfare and don't want to work. And during the presidential debates earlier this year, Ventura showed a picture of Black men calling them bandits, accusing the president of supporting them. These comments, along with accusations that fascists make up a decent chunk of the party's supporters, have led many on the left to call for Chega to be banned for being a fascist party, something the Constitution of Portugal does allow. Chega itself has stated that they aren't racist, and are just standing up for equal rights in Portugal. Chega's position as the furthest right party in Portugal will likely continue to create controversy, so don't expect them to disappear quietly anytime soon. The last party we will talk about is Iniciativa Liberal, or Liberal Initiative, or IL. The Liberal Initiative is liberal, and is strongly influenced by classical liberal thought. It sits on the right, wanting to fight back against the left's big government programs. It is like Chega, very recently formed, and only got a little over 1% of the vote last election. It does, however, seem to be projected to grow significantly, with it pulling neck and neck with the well-established Communist Party. Its support base tends to be young, college-educated, and found in either urban areas or in the diaspora. It currently has one MP, and serves in a supply and confidence role in the Azores. It is currently headed by Shuon Kutrin de Figuero, its singular MP. It argues for what they call economic, social, and political freedom for everyone. It argues for a flat 15% tax, supports free market economics and private property, wants to reduce bureaucracy in Portugal, favors allowing greater choice in schooling, 
and wants to adopt a more American or British model of university. It wants to reform the Portuguese state by rewriting the constitution to allow more personal freedom and limit government spending, introducing e-democracy, and reforming the electoral system more in line with Germany's mixed member system. It also supports the legalization of weed and prostitution, wants greater transparency, is pro-NATO, and supports further European integration. So, in terms of negative things or problems present in IL, it seems like the party is a little too young to really say anything. People who dislike right-wing economics or just liberalism in general will obviously not be too fond of the party, but it just doesn't have enough political clout right now for me really to say anything more than that. I suppose the fact that it doesn't have a lot of political clout right now could indicate that the party isn't that popular, or that it's unable to effectively carry out its policy proposals. But yeah, not really a whole lot to say. So those are the parties of Portugal. In summary, Portugal has a party of the center-left, PS, a party of the center-right, PSD, and then a collection of other smaller parties, on either the right or left, who will either compete with these larger parties for voters, or will work with them occasionally to further their own policy goals. I think there actually are local elections coming up relatively soon, so there's that to look forward to, and we can see what parties grow, and what parties shrink. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. The next episode is going to be the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina, so that'll be fun. Maybe I'll get a good fight in the YouTube comments, people arguing with each other. Those are always fun to look at. But it'll probably take a while before I release that. Uh, school just started up for me. Like, the day I'm recording this is the first day back at school for me. But hopefully I can get it done in, like, two, two and a half weeks. So, yeah. And then after that, I'll do French parties and then French territorial politics. But anyways, thank you for watching. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.